Well good morning everyone and welcome once again to uh, Ed's Orchids. It's Sunday morning now and the sun's shining a little bit but uh, it's still quite nippy outside and only about 17-18 degrees in the greenhouse as yet. But uh, something a little bit different today. I've had a request to talk about uh, tips of brown leaves uh, and uh, somebody wants to have a look at the fish see how they're getting on and I've also included a bit of wildlife from the garden and I think I'll uh, I'll start off with the, the, uh, the garden wildlife it's only a, it's only a couple of minutes and uh, I've, I've only been uh, putting bird food out now for a couple of weeks and uh, we're getting all sorts of stuff in the garden now so we'll have a look at that first a nice little blue tit on the top there trying to get to the fat and the trouble is they keep getting fright, uh, scared away by the uh, squirrels I'm living near the woods here I'm inundated with squirrels they're always running all over the garden and onto the bird seed and all over the place Let's see if we can get a little close up of that bird Whoopsie daisy. Just a little blue tit. Oh, and another one. And there's a grey two spotted woodpecker trying to get to the fat there. And I think it's keeping an eye on the uh, on the squirrel. I'll just watch it for a minute. Well, so while you're just looking at these uh, Mazda values, I'll talk a bit about uh, brown leaf tips. Well, this can happen uh, if you use too much fruit. It can happen by overwatering, where the roots can take up more water than the leaves can deal with, and uh, blowing cool air onto the leaves uh, causes these this, uh, brown leaf tips. Or they might simply be uh, old leaves that are dying off. Now when you're growing plants, uh, you can use shortcuts for anything, water, fertilising, uh, very aspects of the orchid keeping. But watering is the most important aspect of good housekeeping. It cannot be shortcut, cannot be overlooked. And this is a big subject. And you also have to take into account the consideration of the use of fertilisers. How much, how often. Orchids will grow if no fertiliser is uh, used. But they do grow better if you use a little bit of it. And one thing you can forget is that uh, the salts you use in your fertiliser will grab onto the medium that your plants are in. Uh, it will grab onto the roots and it will also grab onto the inside of the pots. Grabbing hold of the inside of the pots is one reason I will not use terracotta pots. Uh, it's because they're porous and the salts will always be there in the clay. I used to use uh, 
terracotta pots with cut layers or cut layers and almost found that new roots when they reached the edges of the pot will always stop growing and the tips of the roots will grow black. Now this is only my opinion, I'm sure out there someone will be telling me I'm wrong. Uh, that's fine by me but I can only tell you what I have experienced. I spend a lot of time watering every pot individually. This is one of the reasons I've cut my collection down to around a hundred plants or even less. Now all plants will not be watered the same way. It will all depend on the medium, size of the pots etc. And when using bark you will water when almost dry. Uh, but some pots will have sphagnum in them and will dry out much slower than the bark. So you've got to take all that into consideration. Now flushing is very important to try and rid the medium and roots of salts. Now this will uh, remove some of the salts but uh, if you're required to, to remove the majority of salts you can flush without some salts and I, don't, I know that sounds a bit strange about uh, flushing away salts with salts but it does help but don't ask me why. A better alternative is a low measure of phosphoric acid. Now if anybody using pH down, which I know a lot of you are, uh, this is always made, or 99% made of phosphoric acid. And it only takes a drop or two to lower the pH down to around 6. But there again a lot depends on your local water hardness and its pH. Fresh rainwater is slightly acidic and the plants will love to be out in the rain with the rain flushing and cleaning the medium of some salts. When the weather will not drop below sort of 11 or 12 degrees I will be putting my plants outside uh, as many as I can if I can find enough room for them but don't be worried if the crown of the plants have a puddle in the middle this water will be fresh and will be changed at the next rainfall. But uh, in between the uh, little rainfalls, the warm weather will dry out the crown. And I have never had a problem with rot using this watering method. So if you follow these guidelines, you should almost completely eliminate the uh, dried up end of leaves. There are, however, a few insects which will attack the outer edges of leaves but that's quite a rare occurrence. Although spider mites and false spider mites can do considerable damage to the look of the leaves. So I hope you've uh, digested some of that uh, and realised how much flushing is uh, necessary and uh, I hope you've uh, found out how to rid your, uh, your medium of salts and the roots of salts but don't forget, if you don't feed them, they will still grow. And uh, in that way, you're sure to have good clean leaves. Right, we'll just have a look at these uh, Mazda Valias. And this one here is the Ignea. Some of the leaves are getting old, like I said, so they're discolouring a bit on the edges. But uh, these are, seem to be settling in quite well. Uh, I bought this when it was in flower and uh, there's new growth starting, starting to come up now. So that's looking okay. Some new growth there, some new growth at the back there. So uh, quite pleased with these Mazda Valleys. I'm glad I chose this species because they're, uh, they're quite interesting and the flowers are really interesting. So that's the uh, Ignea. Now this is glandulosa, uh, this is, I only got it about a week ago so I can't expect it to be doing much growing, obviously just be settling itself in now but when I got it there's a lot of, a lot of leaf tips cut off, so uh, 
I'm looking forward to that growing very well and we'll get rid of those uh, cut off leaf, leaf tips because they don't look very nice. But that's uh, Masdevallia glandulosa. I keep these nice and damp. This is one I got from uh, Spisotics. This is another one I got from Spisotics and it's uh, Masdevallia uh, striatella. Uh, this is just settling in as well so I can't expect much growth to come there but uh, it looks like there's one probably coming up there at the bottom so that's settling in very nicely. Masdevallia striatella beautiful little flowers on these and if you get a, a real specimen plant of these they're absolutely beautiful. The flowers aren't very good but they're beautiful and striped, absolutely gorgeous. This is one of the uh, Masdevallias I got from uh, Germany, Grobroschner and uh, this is doing very very nicely. This is starting to put up new growth in the middle it's putting up new growths, coming out to the edges, putting up new growths and uh, very pleased with these plants from Germany. Absolutely lovely. Perfect leaves on them. That's Masdevallia Pixis. And this is the last uh, Masdevallia and it's growing very, very nicely and it's uh, Masdevallia uh, Vietciana. Absolutely gorgeous, growing very, very well. Got three new growths there, and it was just started in spike when I got it. And uh, look at this length of this spike now. Hello, me camera tripod there, and the fan's going. But it's a long, 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 long spike. And there's the uh, bud, almost ready to open. That is Masdevallia Vecciana. Lovely. Well, I think I'll just finish this uh, video with uh, just a quick look at the uh, discus fish. And uh, that's for Ruth in Canada. So thank you very much for watching, thank you to all my subscribers and uh, once again if there's anything you'd like me to do I will gladly do it for you. So thanks once again for watching and until next time I'll see you all later. Bye. Well I'm showing these fish for uh, Ruth in Canada. She's uh, requested that uh, she just wants to have a look at them. She's a fishy person, I think. And uh, I was hoping these would breed. They keep cleaning this pot and cleaning this pot, but nothing else happens. And I'm just wondering if the ones, the two that are cleaning the pot are both females. Because with this uh, type of fish, uh, the discus, uh, females have been known to uh, lay eggs together doing the same thing and uh, the only way you can tell when you've got uh, a male of this species is uh, when one of the eggs one of the eggs one of the eggs hatch and uh, that's the only way you can tell you've got uh, a male sometimes uh, they grow a long uh, spike on the dorsal fin but uh, these haven't so I'm wondering whether these are really two, uh, three females I have in here. I mean they chase each other around but that's just because it's uh, it's a thing to do with this species you know they want the hierarchy you know I'm in charge you 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 go down the list a bit and that's what it's all about but you can see this one looking at the pot again I don't know they keep picking at it and the ones that keep picking at it are the flame one there, which I think is very beautiful, and the turquoise. But I still think the two females. Anyhow, uh, Ruth, I hope, hope you've enjoyed this little look at them, and uh, if anything happens, I'll, sh I'll show that as well.